Some of my poems, my stepmom had kept copies of. They were published in the Godrich Signal Star when I was a teenager. I was so serious about being a poet and a writer and eventually a painter. I sang in the local teen tones and had dreams of continuing with my sisters as an a cappella trio. Armed with my love of Bruce Coburn lyrics and inspiration from reading T.S. Eliot, Shakespeare, E.E. E. Cummings, Sylvia Plath, Gertrude Stein, Farley Mowat, and Margaret Atwood. She memoried a fable, as ancient as the aged tree she leaned against, dreaming a Nancy tales. She memoried a fable. After the meal, she gathered her words, sharing stories of early days, domestic wars, battles at home and far away. She memoried a fable of goddesses and sheroes gathering. Their radiant displays inspire empowering women and children, young and the old, to thrive, triumphant over the ravages of social hierarchy. She memoried a fable. She imaged a healing telling from tomorrow's reverie, seated under branches in a newly grown forest, spinning futures where equality is reality. Hopefully, and for me, I wanted to put that that what hip hop has 
done to me, I want to put that into context on the record in regards to the openness that I feel towards music, which comes from me being focused on hip-hop to begin with. And I want to put that into music and put it down and use those people that are inspiring me that are not just hip-hop artists, that are, but artists that like hip-hop, but happen to be like, you know, with um, keyboard maestros or piano maestros like Robert Mitchell or Nicky Yo or who are kind of celebrated top of their range jazz musicians here and mm -hmm. utilize those people because I'm living in an age right now where the next Courtney Pine is standing next to me so it's either Sawel Kinch or Jason Yard or you know or different people and they're right here and they happen to listen to hip hop too Mm -hmm. And I wanted to utilize those people because we're peers. I didn't want to just limit myself to being with rap peers. I wanted to be with music peers in my country mm -hmm. and put that down musically. Do you do you feel that you're um, you're part Ni you're you're Nigerian, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Nigerian British. I'm Nigerian. Yeah, British. Nigerian. Do do you feel that uh, being Nigerian as well might might have uh, any kind of impact on your? your approach to uh, your lyrics, your music? I'd like to say yes, but in some ways probably no. So I think my experience, what, what made me, what's made me who I am is, is the journey that I've taken rather than, and the journey that my parents have taken. So the fact that they came here, I grew up here in a, in a, in a hodgepodge of West Indian, English, Indian uh, culture right around me. So, you know, I came out of my house, you have to have a West Indian attitude to survive outside your house. But inside your house, you were African living in England. All of these sort of things kind of definitely helped me understand that, you know, sometimes you have to be an outsider looking into something to really get a better perspective on it. And that's the approach that I use musically. So I'm, I guess the journey that I'm taking as a person, more so than my actual background, has helped me learn to be an outsider and learn to enjoy looking in the building, stand outside the building and look in on it and then act from that perspective. Does that make sense? Yes. So for me, because I was a person that was, oh, I, I was adopted, so I was living outside of England, outside of London, and then came back to live in, in the black community. And then well, as I do music and I'm growing up, I'm feeling like that. Can you hear that big noise? No. Okay, okay, cool. So, um, doing hip hop, I feel the same way. Like, I'm a hip hop head, but I need to stand outside of, outside of hip hop. I need to stand outside of music and stand outside of myself and see what it is I'm trying to say or do. And then reinterpret that and inject that into my music. And that's what's happened with the album. Okay. I have one last question. Ode to the Neighbor's Dog A culture is a total way of life. It embraces what people ate and what they wore, the way they walked and the way they talked, the manner in which they treated death and greeted the newborn. Walter Rodney Bye.
with mushroom between leaf and branch. We call the hot And the film is primarily concerned with the experiences of, of migrants living in London, or I should say they're not migrants anymore, they're kind of black settlers, right? Um, <clears throat> but that is not to say that there have not been other films, I think that there have might be some very short documentaries around London, kind of standard television, current affairs documentaries about architecture, about the gentrification and so on. Um, but the film is uh, Twilight City is uh, constructed around questions of of race, um, exile, dispossession, and solitude. I mean, you know, the film is really to do with with moments of solitude in which one begins to have meditations on one's own existence vis-a-vis -vis the city in which one. The dark allows space to be awake without feeling as though you're always working. You used to wake excited, looking forward to the day, looking forward to what you have to do, engaged in what was happening at the time. At least you thought you were. Looking back, you consider perhaps you weren't living in the now. Perhaps you were only running away from the past from what became all too familiar tales of violence and abuse, but because of race and class, you felt as though your truth was not valid and speech was betrayal. The Negro Speaks of Rivers to W.E.B. Du Bois I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. 
I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers.